Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making lamb rogan josh which I'm going to be doing in the slow cooker. Um, I'm also going to talk about an alternative way of cooking it because I know not everyone has a slow cooker but I'll do that as I am cooking it for you. Um, I just want to go through some of the ingredients here just to make you aware that some of the vegetable ingredients aren't part of the recipe um, but I've kind of tweaked it and added it. I've got this recipe out of Slimming Well's Little Book of Sauces by the way if anyone's interested and it's on page 18. So let me start off with what I've got. So you'll need one large onion. I'm using frozen onions that are chopped and they're about 140 grams worth there. You're going to need some fry light, some flour, oil. You're going to need one can of chopped tomatoes, mine is 400 grams. You're going to need three garlic cloves. I'm using the very lazy chopped garlic. I'll use three teaspoons of that. You're also going to need one stock cube. I'm using a lamb stock cube. If you're a vegetarian and you want to make this meal, I would use a vegetable stock cube instead. You're going to need some extra lean leg of lamb, diced preferably, or you could buy it and dice it yourself. Um, I'm using, I think it's 500 grams, 450 grams. Obviously, if you're vegetarian, I would probably suggest using the corn chicken style pieces if you wanted to. Um, I'm also putting in two red peppers. Uh, this is optional, you don't have to do that. I'm also going to be using some, some mushrooms. This bag I've bought, I think, think is 170 grams but you can put more in if you want this is literally just to bulk the meal so I have a batch of meals in my freezer you're then going to need one teaspoon of ground coriander ground ginger paprika mild chili powder you're also going to need one bay leaf. You're going to need four cardamom pods. And you're also going to need three cloves. These are whole cloves, by the way. You're also going to need is two cinnamon sticks. I don't actually use them. I just use one quarter of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon instead, which is just as good. So first of all, I'm going to spray some fry light in the pan. You should do several squirts. And then I'm going to turn the heat on. Just so you know this recipe, I'm going to link down below in the description box. And I'm also going to put it on my blog, which is also going to be in the description box as well for you. So first of all I'm going to fry my onion and garlic. I've got it on a high heat at the moment. I do suggest that when you're cooking this meal as well to have some water as well because it dries out when you're cooking it so you're going to need to add a little bit of water as you go. It does say to add it with the onions but because I've got frozen onions I'm not actually going to do that but if you were using fresh you might need to. So I'm going to cook this for about four to five minutes. When um, it is kind of softened a bit I'm going to come back to you. So that's now been cooking for about four minutes or so, just over four minutes, and this is kind of how we want it to sort of be looking softened but not browning. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in all my powdered ingredients, well powdered spices, including the cinnamon, 
I shall put that all in and then give it a mix and you'll need to cook this now for about two minutes you'll need to keep stirring it and as you can see it is going to go a bit dry but as you're stirring it you can see that you're going to need to add a little bit of your water to it just a little bit and you'll have to keep probably doing that for the whole two minutes so what I'll do, I'll come back to you when the two minutes is up to show you how it looks. So the two minutes is now up and as you can see it's almost turned into like a paste. And as you can see here I've used probably near enough over half of the water. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the lamb. I'll put that in just to brown that a little bit. I'm going to take that little bit off. I probably should have cut some of that off, but I hate to say it, I'm not going to bother. And I'm now going to turn the heat down just a little bit, just to medium, because I don't want the paste to kind of burn. I'm just going to give that a bit of a mix. I'm just, I want to brown this very, very slightly, really. Not too much. Now if you wanted to, you could literally not bother with any of this. Slint all the ingredients in the slow cooker and just let it cook without doing all the, the browning and cooking the, the onions. I have done that before and it doesn't change the taste hugely. It's not quite as good, but I think if you were feeling lazy, you could probably get away with that. I've done it a couple of times. But I thought today I would show you the proper method of how I usually would do it. That's nearly halfway browned. So I'll come back to you when, I'm, when it's browned enough. Okay, so this is kind of browned enough, so I'm happy with that. I'm now going to put the rest of the ingredients and I'm going to turn this down to low. If you were cooking this on the hob, which you could cook it for 30 minutes when all the ingredients are in, um, I think you would bring it to the boil and then simmer it. So first of all, I'm going to put in my stock. This is in 200 millilitres of boiling water, which is not boiling now when I did it, but it was. I'm going to put that in. I'm then going to put in my peppers and my mushrooms. I'm now going to put in my chopped tomatoes. I'm also going to put in some black pepper. So I'm hoping that this is going to make four to six portions. I don't think it will. I think it will probably make four or maybe five. We'll have to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that a bit of a mix. You could also cook this on the hob and then put it in the oven. Put it in an oven, a casserole dish that's suitable for the oven and put it in the oven for about an hour. That would work at 180. I think I've done that before if you don't have the option for the slow cooker or just cook it on the hob for 30 minutes. But I don't know if the meat would still be chewy. I've never cooked it on the hob before but there are a couple of options there for you. Okay, I'm now gonna put in the last remaining spices. So I'm gonna put the bay leaf in, the cardamom pods and the cloves. Just give that a bit of a mix. Let's try and get the bay leaf under the, the mixture. Ok 
Okay, so if you were doing this on the hob, you would keep it on and cook it for another 30 minutes. If you were doing it on the in the oven, you would put it in the casserole dish 180 for about an hour to an hour and a half, but I'm gonna do it on my slow cooker, so I'll show you in a minute when I put it in the slow cooker. Right, so as you can see, I've now got this in my slow cooker. I'm actually going to turn it on to high. I'm gonna cook it for about between four and six hours on high. If you wanted to do it on low instead, you would cook it for probably seven to nine hours, I would reckon. So I'm gonna put the lid on that and we'll come back to it in a bit. So it's now been cooking for about four, yeah, four and a half hours, I'd say, just over four and a half hours. I ideally might have given it a little longer, but it's kind of getting late now. So let's have a quick look inside to see how it's looking. Sorry, I've just steamed you all up. <laughs> So yeah, that looks pretty good. Just get the spoon and have a quick look. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So usually what I would do is I would um, fish out the bay leaf, which I can see is right there. And I would also take out the cardamom pods. You can leave them in, I, it's personal preference. I don't like them in, but you can leave them in and I'm also going to find all the clothes as well if I can. Um, personal preference, just yet yeah, again it's up to you whether you keep it in or not, I'm not overly keen on it being there. So um, yes this has turned out okay with the mushrooms, I don't normally put mushrooms in, I've just done it to bulk out the meal really. So what I'd usually do is I usually do about two serving spoons like this into a container sort of about this big this sort of container and it should hopefully make at least four I would hope maybe even five so yeah so thank you for watching this video I hope you enjoyed um, my recipe and keep an eye out for some more recipes that will be coming up so I'll see you all soon bye